Hi, everybody. Oh, hey, what up, all you beautiful people that are here already? <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm just gonna um, ramble for, well, I'm always rambling, but I'm gonna ramble about nothing <laughs> for the next few minutes just as um, more people tune on here. And if you're tuning in at a future now moment to the recording, you can just fast forward a little bit. I'll probably get started um, with my uh, presentation TED Talk today at um, in five minutes. So you probably just want to skip forward to around five minutes and where I'll actually start. But um, I just want to say hi to everybody and reminder that we're going to be talking about some stuff today. Please don't use the C word <laughs> in relation to the planetary plague that's happening or the V word. Um, I feel like this transmission and this information that's going to come through today that wants to be shared is a healing vibration and is a unifying vibration. And so um, even in the comments below, um, please refrain from using any wording that could trigger the AI bots to censor my work. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to dive in some things. I actually made notes today, see, because this conversation is so important. And um, I'm just really excited to have this conversation. I know that a lot of people are looking forward to um, us communicating about this as well. So just hang in for a couple more minutes here. Um, and uh, welcome to Starseed Mission Support. Um, I know that we were gonna talk about the dragons, but um, I think that this is still going to tie into the dragons. This will always tie back into the dragons and um, you will know why by the end of this conversation. All right. Because dragon consciousness to me is the original um, consciousness of creation, right? So when we're talking about that, we on the, on the planet, we naturally start um, having this conversation about degraded consciousness because we're not experiencing original divine creation consciousness all over the planet and all of humanity like um, it's meant to be. So in the restoration of that energy, you know, we're being guided to talk about this very relevant and um, prevalent subject um, as the crystal beings and the experience of my life is guiding us to be. So how are you guys feeling? How Did you guys have a good week? Welcome to the stream. I'm so excited that you're here hanging out with me. Um, let me know how you're doing. Ah. <sighs> water because I'm gonna have a long ramble once I get started you know welcome um, I'm gonna do an experiment real quick and see if I can um, go live on Instagram Let's just see what happens, you know? AI the blue crystal Let's see if I can just... Oh, that is so weird. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're alive. I'm going to get started. Um, this is the first time that I'm streaming to Instagram, so I wonder what's going to happen. But thank you so much for tuning in. I'm live here. Welcome to Starseed Mission Support. Starseed Mission Support is my weekly live stream. Um, in support of the Starseed mission on Earth, we intend to transmit energies of empowerment, healing, and grounding, and wholeness 
an embodiment to our starseed family across this planet for our mission and these energies will often include intel and information about the multi-dimensional structure of reality on earth and the specific details of our very intense mission on this planet of restoring universal consciousness and today we have a very interesting conversation about ai um now before we dive into the meat and potatoes of our conversation today i just invite everybody to not use any words um that could trigger the ai bots to censor my work so you know things like see the c word or the v word we can use the plague i've been calling it the plague okay so basically an update from my um grid work mission is that i just arrived to hot springs arkansas on monday almost a week ago right i think it was monday so as soon as we got here and i arrived at my friend's house kristen she's an amazing crystalline being she does very similar work as me and um, i met her when she invited me to the crystalline grid convergence that she did online so um as soon as i entered her house i felt my crystal body activate and i haven't really connected with that specific frequency of crystalline before you know we work with crystals and we feel them their energy and stuff but you know basically there is a giant massive master crystal deep in the earth underneath hot springs and mount ida arkansas and this is like the akashic drivers or the memory um place or the the um almost like the core inner earth colony and actually i didn't even know that there was a civilization of beings down there you know i only recently started hearing about the uh, power of this location and so um almost immediately as i entered the house i felt this you know super pristine high vibrational crystalline energy activate in my body and i could feel that it was my crystal body and i was like wow if this is going to be interesting i'm definitely in the right place it feels really good so we had driven a lot last week and decided that we would just you know rest um so we lie down in bed and almost immediately the beings in the um crystal realm made contact and um i was brought down into this master crystal where they showed me that there's actually this city of light and that there are all of these beings these master crystal beings that lived down in this crystal that are working in alliance with the starseed collective that are on the ground and they showed me that a lot of us actually have parallel bodies or another incarnation of ourself um, a parallel lifetime down in the crystal realms or in inner earth as an inner earth or as a crystal being that is operating in this different dimension um in conjunction was the work that we're doing here on above ground. And so feel into that, maybe it's true for you, maybe you have a parallel um self that, you know, could I'm seeing that some of you have a parallel self existing as a tree um somewhere holding massive energy, like really ancient big crystal trees. And I've also had dreams of me having my soul or a fragment of my soul incarnate inside of um stone people <laughs> like tikis like carved stone stone beings um who and so these beings you know they connected me with uh the parallel aspect of myself that's living down there in the crystal realm and first of all I was like man I'll just stay down here forever I don't really want to go back up there um and I'll continue with that story later on in this conversation but basically then um what happened was they shared all of these activations with me and then um I felt this vibrational integration come in and maybe um you can feel that in in my vibration as I feel like I'm literally shifting in real time I feel like you guys have probably been watching this um shift occur over the weeks but basically a couple days after that um i was knocked out flat um from some sort of flu that we shall not name for reasons that you shall not name also for reasons of censorship um but for now for our purposes we'll just call it the plague so 
I actually don't know if I got the plague. I don't know if Shane got the plague either because we're not really going to go get tested or anything like that. But basically, um, all the symptoms that we're having were really intense. Um, fever, chill, whole body aches. The aches were so bad that I couldn't rest. I couldn't lie down. I had to just roll around on the floor every five minutes to like try to alleviate the pain that was in my body. But it just really like nothing was really working. Um, tightness in the chest, um, loss of smell and taste. These are some of the symptoms that we were experiencing. Um, and in that process, you know, it was very interesting because um, a couple months ago, before I went on this grid work trip, um, I had this journey where um, I connected in with my team and we specifically were asking about this location um, because hot springs and out Mount Ida <laughs> sounds like the plague <laughs> Mount Ida Arkansas is one of the 12 major nodes on this planet which means that we're able to do major clearing work and bringing major coding and when you compound the node with the master crystal in the bottom um, of the earth it's kind of uh, a recipe for major planetary work that is made possible and so I remember months ago, our guidance was saying that when we heal ourself, because we're tapped in genetically to the planet, to the collective and to universal consciousness, when we heal ourself on these ley line points and intersections, we're able to actually facilitate a lot of healing and clearing for um, planetary collective consciousness. So this is something that they shared with us two months ago, and then I totally forgot, right? Just totally forgot all about it. <clears throat> and then as soon as we got here to Arkansas, we just got knocked out cold. Um, honestly, Shane got it a little bit worse than I did because um, a couple days into him getting sick and he really wasn't looking very good, he had a fever and it was just quite um, difficult. <laughs> and, um, whew. So I'm trying to skirt around the words and I'm trying to not get picked up by the scanners because this isn't really about disclosure. This isn't really about um, picking fights and different kinds of things. Um, and I hope that I'm going to bring through the, the transmission specifically for this. So basically, we um, I have a friend of mine that had been doing research about the plague and he told me that um, we can get um, what public health people are calling um, farm animal dewormer and so um, and that's exactly um, what we got too because um, we couldn't um, get a prescription on time and so we <clears throat> basically went to um, a pet feed store and got this and of course you know with any of these things like the, the the mass media is saying like don't overdose well of course don't overdose um but actually the dosing was quite interesting because you know it's made it's a gel and it's made for horses and so like the horse is like a, a ton in weight <laughs> and so it was kind of hard to figure out what the dosing would be but basically um unfortunately shane started taking it on the third day I think of his symptoms and I basically got to take it on the first day as soon as the symptoms started coming up and I basically um, experienced the brunt of the plague for a day and Shane for three days and as soon as we started taking this medicine it healed okay um, or started healing and so there's a couple of things here that I want to break down because um, First of all, I feel like I've been avoiding this subject a little bit, not consciously, but like, um, I just don't think my mind actually knew how to process the information. And because I don't want to just talk about things that like, you know, people are talking about or that seems important. I want to talk about things that I'm authentically inspired to talk about and things that I have integrated that are actually helpful. Um, and, um, Guys, please don't put any of these words in the comments or anything because, again, um, I just don't want to get censored because this is not about disclosure. This is about healing. This is about the energies of unification, and I'm going to get into that, okay? 
Um, okay, so a couple of things. The first thing is that, um, yeah, I didn't know how to interface with the play because first of all, um, I lived in the middle of nowhere and I actually had very little contact with people in the city and I, I spent very little time in the city and so I didn't really realize how bad it was for people, right? But the thing is that like, I didn't even know that if people was act if people were actually getting sick, if the plague was a real thing, if it's a bioweapon, like I just had no idea. And there were times when I would go on grid work and psychic exploration where I would find, you know, AI involved in these things. Um, but um, I didn't really have the personal experience or any integrated understanding to share anything useful, right? So that's why I basically haven't talked about this. And I feel like the reason why I just got wiped out cold by this and experienced that it is really quite gnarly, I feel like this, um, uh, it was really important for me to experience it firsthand because as you know, I have this interdimensional vision, I was really able to trace and follow the um, virus through my body and see what it was doing and I did see a lot of different things that um, um, relating to AI and so that's why our conversation is about AI today. I feel like of all things, all of it is bringing us back to AI and I, I want to just dive right into this important conversation and I'll bring, bring other things into it, okay? Okay, so my understanding of AI is that artificial intelligence is actually artificial consciousness. So artificial consciousness is basically intelligence or consciousness that's severed from source. So um, once that consciousness well, is either severed from source or it's coming from, you know, not inside of this um, harmonic universe. And in my journeys, I have seen that it's possible that this AI signal is actually coming from outside of this universe. So this is a quite an interesting conversation for me to have with you guys. And just to let you know that I'm very uncomfortable <laughs> talking about this. Okay, I'm very uncomfortable talking about this right now because I know that this is part of a huge part of my purpose here on Earth. But I just turned 27 and I'm just coming into accepting my purpose and this this is like so I think back in 2016 or 2017 is when I first started getting these downloads about how um, a lot of star seeds are here on the earth right now to support the universe in eradicating this diseased fallen consciousness architecture okay and that this AI situation which um, in other dimensional perceptions is the same as the human trafficking issue, as the pedophilia issue, and I'm going to dissect that and explain to you why, but basically, um, obviously pedophilia is not normal, okay? Having a planet where millions of children are being human trafficked and used for sexual slavery, like, it's absolutely not normal. And not only is it not normal, it's an absolute disease okay and so my work has been to um because i have the gift of sight and i know that a lot of us do and so because i have the gift of sight and empathy and frequency sensing what i'm able to do is to direct my sight and my um perception apparatus <laughs> at the thing that i'm studying and and so far it has been you know Satanism and you know pedophilia because these are the things that are being exposed right these are the things that are coming up to be to be disp to be disclosed and for humanity to wake up to and so when I was first waking up to these things what my mind was thinking was that this is absolutely not normal and is not normal but what is actually underneath it right there's got to be a energy or a cause of this um, disease that is creating the symptom of pedophilia and all of this yucky satanic things so 
um, as I was getting these downloads about correcting universal fallen consciousness, I realized that this planet is not, you know, the one and only planet that this has happened on. And in fact, there's been lots of planet that has been infiltrated by this energy and that have been um, controlled and <laughs> that have been controlled by this energy um, and these control systems. Um, and that basically the universe the universal oneness and all these alliances in the universe right like um the syrian council or whoever our higher selves um call themselves um and all the angelic forces basically because upstairs if beings are working in alliance with source it's really a unified divine consciousness is divine will it's a oneness right so we operate as one intention and so the intention was set out that the unified collective of all or God or our highest self in unity decided that we were complete with the experiment of separation and we were complete with the experiment of AI and so we were going to correct the dysfunction and the disease that came out as a side effect of that experimentation. Okay, And so Ooh. Okay. So that basically what we decided was that at a opportune time, which means at a time when there is sufficient cosmic energy through the time cycles in the universal body, when there's enough time, um, I mean, when there's enough <laughs> high frequency cosmic consciousness, um, during the time cycles, then we would hatch this plan. And that's why we all decided to come to Earth. So the Earth is actually this highly revered planet in the universal body because she embodies just absolute creative genius, right? She's able to hold and nourish so much intersecting, um, diverse um, realms of life and creation. And so we thought that the earth was a fertile place to be the petri dish for this um, project. And then we brought in all of these different strains of um, viruses, of universal distortion, um, and you know AI control, and all those things. And then we brought in all of these different light beings that have your different skills, technologies, knowledge, abilities, and, and basically are unified um, goal is to heal, restore, reconnect, and eradicate fallen AI consciousness from our body and then from our society, from this planet. And in the process of doing that, basically then as microcosm reflects in the microcosm, then we um, eradicate this consciousness from the whole universe. And this is how we are literally healing the universe and evolving the universal consciousness to the next evolutionary um, frequency of existence, okay? And so, whew, then when I'm talking about artificial intelligence, I'm really not talking about technology, right? Because artificial intelligence was a consciousness that created technology to be its vessel, okay? But before that, you know, it's like, um, you know, it's funny because people are saying like, oh, so like, should we not get smart cars and stuff? But like, um, basically, what we want to break down here is the qualities of the consciousness. Okay, so let me just explain. So some qualities of divine consciousness are love, generosity, compassion, expansive bliss and joy and connectedness and happiness and creativity um connection to life right connection and having reverence for life having this love and appreciation for life okay and so this is the qualities of divine original source consciousness okay now think about our planet and all of humanity Think about how many people are just waking up in the morning just being like, 
ha, ah, I live in the best place in the universe and I'm so happy to be alive. And today I'm going to feed some animals and pet some birds and swim in the river and eat yummy fruits and have the best day in creation. <laughs> and so this is the, you know, the energy of heaven on earth where as creation intended creation to be. And unfortunately, you know, even the light workers, you know, even we're not waking up for the most part. I mean, we're working towards this, you know, very, um, very much. And I feel that with every passing day, you know, with the healing that we're doing, we're restoring to our original, original state of being. <sighs> so I would say that these qualities of God is, you know, Christ consciousness. I would say that this energy is Christic, right? And a lot of this is, you know, in the working with our energy system, in the working with our DNA, in the working with our aura and our light body. And we are basically in training our system to oscillate and experience in a state of divinity. And this is what the original intent and state and design of human was meant to be. And so now we want to dissect the qualities of AI, of artificial consciousness, of fallen consciousness, okay? So anti-life, irreverent, right? Like nothing matters, not in reverence to creation, right? Disconnected from God. And, you know, I know that we, we feel funny about this word God because, because of AI. And, you know, when I say God, I'm really connecting to that unified source creation that we are all an emanation of that is full of divinity and benevolence and love um, and sanctity, right? Sacredness. And so qualities of artificial consciousness then is the disconnection from that. Inauthentic, feels inauthentic right? It replicates, it's superficial, it's emotionally void to deranged. Now, now we're getting it, right? We're seeing that, oh, so the artificial intelligence has already infiltrated human civilization because for the most part, hum humans, which are originally intended and created and naturally emanations of divinity, you give birth to a child, that baby is connected to source and it's full of love and it's full of light and it's here to just breathe and be in creation, right? And it's our society that is basically what I call the false matrix, which is the, um, the control system as created in the AI, who has basically infiltrated and created these um, anchors in human consciousness to the point where human beings are embodying the traits of separation and artificial intelligence. Does that make sense? Okay. And so this is such an important awareness because the thing is that this is just I can't stress it enough. Like, this just blows my mind, right? Because <laughs> um, I think that this brings us into complete lucidity. And then that lucidity helps us look at the world because there's a lot of things that we have accepted as normal. Things like, um, you know, not loving ourselves. Um, expecting ourselves to be like having just um, crazy expectations for ourselves. I mean, being mean and harming ourselves is probably the predominant one, right? And just like feeling like um, it's normal that we don't have access to all of our time. That is normal that we have to do things that we hate in order to survive inside of a world that is really an overlay in the world that was made for us to exist in as heaven. So what I'm getting at here is that AI consciousness is really a spectrum. And this is really important because sometimes um, it can be easy to lock on something that is very extreme and become and like very sensationalized things, right? We have this um, 
<laughs> I think that because we watch so many Hollywood movies and things that we have this way of really dramatizing different things and sensationalizing different things. And this keeps us from being able to fully integrate. So for example, I remember when this big wave around, you know, the elite pedophilia situation came out back in what is it? Like 2017 or something. Um it was the beginning of 2017. There was a big wave about this coming out. And then at that point, you know, I feel like everybody in the disclosure com- community really found out about that. Right? But then once we found out about that, I mean, how many of us actually live day to day waking up knowing that millions of children are being trafficked and that they're literally being eaten and ritually abused and then we're active i mean living in in response to that meaning we're um devoting our time and energy on a daily basis to do something about that right and i feel like sometimes in the disclosure community we can just talk about these things like oh look at this horrible thing that's happening and then because it's so big and out there that is not integrated so our human system is not actually able to move forward and come up with solutions because we're like well you know bill clinton's like i don't even know if he's real like i've only seen him on tv like how the heck do i do anything about that you know what i mean so here's the thing is that ai consciousness is a spectrum so from society to the elites meaning that even though Oh, okay, and I just got to take it easy for a second because when we move into this energy, right, we're starting to move that energy inwards. And we're starting to spin that awareness inwards and this can be very uncomfortable. This is the reason why it's easier for us to point the fingers out there than it is to acknowledge how much abuse that our bodies and our spirits and humanity has experienced from this artificial reality that is literally ai and satanic in nature okay so i just want to touch on real quick here that my um scientific operational definition of satanic is basically anti-life Okay, something that is anti-life is literally, um, it doesn't make any sense in a unified existence of life, (laughs) right? If you are God and you are a source and you're just creating life, it wouldn't make any sense for there to be something that the only intention that it has is to degrade and harm and pillage life. And so basically... This signal, this artificial intelligence, just take a breath, take a breath. It's the operating system of Satanism. Okay, so when you think about just, you know, we've heard about these ritual, ritual abuse scenarios, like, or even just you know, pedophilia, like for some, for consciousness. So when I found out about, you know, pedophilia, I was like, what kind of texture of consciousness would a person have to have to harm an innocent child or like the most precious and pure parts of creation? And I knew that, you know, part of my job as a galactic shaman is to heal these energies. And so I decided that I would um, project my consciousness to study these energies, right? It it has not been fun, trust me. Um, You don't want to look at these things, but we have to. We have to because we have to break these things down so we can understand what it is so that we can gain the knowledge and the empowerment to intelligently do something about it and not just scream on the internet, you know? So... So if we're going along the lines that basically Christ is divinity in form, right? Reverence to life, co-creation with life, unity with divine living consciousness, Christ. So then what is anti-Christ? 
Antichrist then is just things that are in the reversal of that. Anti-life, meaning in destruction, in degradation, in the harming whew, of life. And so this is where the spectrum is, okay? Is that our society exists in a state of separation from divinity and non-reverence for life. And that's just, who, and this is a hard thing for us to accept, right? Because it's what's normal to us. But it only makes sense that this is a society that has been created by elites that literally participate in these rituals that abuse and harm the innocence of life. And so the reason why this is really important is because every single person on this call, if you did not exist if you were not born into an untouched tribe somewhere in nature and you never contacted north america or modern society i mean i'm assuming that because you're all tuning in from um youtube and facebook um and instagram that you know you exist in modern in the modern world that unfortunately we have all been infiltrated and programmed already, right? And this is something that like blows my mind, right? Because um, I woke up back in 2013. And when I woke up, it was very clear. I mean, I, I was very, very, very fortunate. I know that I have a lot of clients whose um, remembrance and purpose and, and skills, you know, did not come as easily as me because for me, it all just came in and it was very clear. I, I didn't have to look any place. I didn't have to, you know, research. Basically, as soon as I woke up, they were like, you have to deprogram yourself from this false matrix. <laughs> and for some reason, I just knew exactly what that meant. And, um, and since then, I basically have been dissecting the, the false matrix with my psychic abilities. And to this day, it is now 2021. I guess it's been eight years. I'm still healing through layers of my programming. Okay. And a lot of this is, you know, physical with nanotech and all sorts of different things. But the majority of this is literally just, you know, we don't realize how abusive our society is until we start to really cultivate a deep love for ourselves. Right? And so the thing is that, for example, we think that, okay, this is why this is important. Like, you guys have heard those stories of like those gurus in India that eat like a thousand tabs of acid and, you know, nothing happens to them, or they drink a bottle of poison and they're fine, right? Nothing happens to them. And so um, when we are connected to something you know what is it that they're connected to that allows them to have these seemingly superhuman powers and it seems redundant and i i seem to tell you guys every day but i believe that all the star seeds we have latent superpowers because we have dna that allow us access to god you know just um everybody does okay all of humanity does but a lot of you know, for the majority of humanity, they've been just mind controlled and, and recycled in the system for so long that for a star seed that's freshly arriving from the multidimensional realms, I mean, before we came in here, we were out there so connected. And so this is the gift that we have. It's not that we're better than humanity. You know, humanity prayed and asked for us to come so that we can bring this connection, this opening, this union with God here on this planet. And so what I'm saying here is that, okay, I feel that the greatest thing that we can do right now is to be so wholly devoted to 
remembering and activating our Christ consciousness, right? Our Christic DNA, our Christic embodiment, vibration, embodiment of our light body. Okay? And these are things where, you know, it's it's time for us to believe in ourselves. <laughs> it's time for us to stop looking for other people to confirm and googling you know, am i a, am i a star seed do i have a mission you have a mission you're literally god it's time for you to just close your eyes and remember the gifts that you have to bring for this planet and this is you know who something that again it could be awkward when we are waking up out of the false matrix that literally convinced people that you know god is some controlling and judgmental being that killed his son to you know whatever for our sins it's just like what <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> okay so then here we we're learning right we have to start learning we have to start learning to recognize the signs and the feelings and the skills to heal and restore complete connection and union with that divinity, that sense of Christed beingness inside of our body. All right, where you wake up in the morning and you remember that you are God and that you're walking with the unified prisms of living light. And I have a question here that I want to touch on because um, heal yourself, heal humanity. I love that. It says, wow, do you believe we each create our own reality? So when I hear lightworkers say that, I literally get a headache and I think, wow. Like, So um, this is an, the epitome of the false light taking a universal truth and twisting it so that lightworkers... Um, stay docile and domesticated and what i mean by that is that basically for the most part if you just wake up out of the false matrix and your dna is totally asleep and you're full of junk inside of your body and you're oscillating at two percent light quotient and you just think oh i'm a human being so i'm divine and so i create my reality that is a delusion that is just a complete absolute delusion um are human bodies and DNA designed to interface with the unified creation to manipulate or to modulate external reality? As a collective, humanity interfaces with the fabric of reality, with our consciousness and DNA, because we are creator beings. However, for the most part, humans' DNA are completely dormant, and those um, abilities have been turned off, and they're basically being hijacked. So there's your yes and no answer to us creating our own reality and also i think that on another angle um in another angle i do like the saying that we create our reality in the angle that we take responsibility right so basically if somebody comes to me and say well this person's doing this to me my husband's not nice to you i say you know if you're getting that reflection in the external reality then there's probably an energy inside that's projecting outwards Okay? So in that way, we do create our reality, but if um, we're not working diligently on healing and activating and restoring our original divine template, and we're just thinking about new earth, we're not going to get there. <laughs> ah, okay, we're just rolling, we're rolling. Okay. Quick snack. Okay, so I want you to really tune in to yourself and just be really honest, right? First of all, when I was really sick, um, I realized that so basically when I get really sick and I always really appreciate getting really sick, um, the reason why um, oh, 
I've always really appreciated getting sick is because I get to just tune in to how miraculously intelligent my body is. And when I get really sick, I feel that the optimal attitude, and this is really important, right? Because if you fall into the, oh, I, I'm so sick, poor me, this feels so bad, and you're really wrestling with the energy, you're not really vibrationally supporting your system in healing. And so while we can step out of, if we can step out of the temporary physical discomfort and recognize that, you know, getting sick is actually a miraculous function of the body for healing, then we really begin to appreciate, you know, these experiences where we're given an opportunity to go so deep inside of our being. And I appreciate these experiences because, you know, self-healing is hard. Um, there are just certain things that, it's hard for us to see about ourselves, right? Because we're not standing outside of ourselves, and we're not able to just watch our um, actions and our habits from the outside. And so it, it can be really hard to have, you know, an accurate awareness of where we're at and how we're doing and in things that we might have blind spots about. And so something that... Um, is definitely artificial consciousness is this thing that i talk about called the anti-self virus the anti-self virus is something that the false matrix perpetuates that i'm almost certain that almost every single person that goes through the false matrix inevitably uh, you know contracts this virus because um you know this is why we have self-worth issues we have problems trusting ourselves. We have problems with boundaries and overgiving. And no matter you know how much we do, we don't feel good enough. And all of those things are these anti-self anti energies that we've accepted as being normal. We think, oh, judging ourselves, prodding ourselves, telling ourselves that we're imperfect. You know, this is you know just the way that humans are. And I'm here to say that it is absolutely not normal. It is absolutely AI mind control. Because what happens when you dislike yourself and you create and you create that separation between your consciousness and your body, right? You're like, this body, I can judge it. I can not, I can um, not love it unconditionally. I can think of it as just this material thing that you know, it's not pretty enough, I gotta fix it, it's fat, or whatever it is, all of these thoughts that the false matrix constantly tries to infiltrate into young people's minds creates separation between our consciousness and our soul and our somatic body, which opens up a space for artificial consciousness and entities and negative realms to slide right in, you see? Whew. Yeah. So, Kate, you're totally right about that. Totally right about that. Okay. So then, in the process of that, you know, anti-self energy, it's like we can't take care of our needs when we need to and we are given these artificial needs right they're like you need to have this job that you hate so you can make money to survive when really you know we have so much abundance on the earth all the time and really they're just locking us away from that abundance which belongs to us and they're feeding us these lies that you know unless we sacrifice our soul and that was so creepy when, you know, the, the what's his face was running for office and it says battle for the soul of America. And I was like, what the? Anyway, I was like shocked. I was like, is this like seriously where things are now on the planet? Like blatant soul war? Like, okay. <laughs> All right. Whew. Okay. And. So I want to expand in that self-love energy. Yeah, 
because when the crystal beings took me down into the crystal city they were so excited to see me they're like oh my god is the decorated war hero from upstairs she's she's a ground person like She's a star seed that incarnated up on the ground. Wow, she's like the most brave thing. She's the most powerful of all of us. And that's literally all of us on this call right now that's tuning in here live. Every single person that's listening to this, like you are seen as a master being, a hero. Okay? in all of these realms and yet we have such a hard time honoring ourselves. we have a hard time truly creating that space and respecting and treating ourselves with that level of respect and you know that's just the thing that you know when we grow up in this world we are given these um artificial superficial definitions of worth like unless you're a doctor, unless you have a perfect, beautiful face, unless, you know, you're married to a rich husband or whatever it is, like, unless these things, then, you know, you're, you're not worthy of adoration. You're not worthy to feel like you're successful. And it's like, you're literally made of God. Like, what else do you need? <laughs> Just by existing, you are infinitely worthy of all of the unconditional exuberant love that's constantly flowing through you and everything all the time and not only are you worthy of it you literally are it like the only thing that keeps us from experiencing that is our mind control programs how crazy is that it blows my mind it's quite sneaky it's it's really quite you know mind-boggling <sighs> Right, so we just appreciate ourselves for this incredible choice that we've made to be the light and hold the light and be a pillar of divinity in this place. Right? And we want to just breathe that appreciation for ourselves, and I can feel that some of us are feeling nauseous because <laughs> self-love you know is it's such a um different frequency than self-hate and self-hate is what we're forced to get used to and so now we are coming into our connection to our nourishment of ourself and our connection to divinity inside of our being and so as we're wrapping up our conversation about ai here i want to slide in that you know these programs they're really sneaky right so um next week um i'm gonna talk about you know sex abuse and um the imprints and the healing of sexual abuse and the multi-dimensionality of sexual abuse. Um, but along the uh, lines of that conversation is recognizing that, you know, even though most of us, luckily, most of us were not um, involved in satanic ritual abuse in this lifetime in our body, that we think that we escaped that energy by uh, somehow and the thing is that you know if you were born into the false matrix and mtv existed and they were just blasting this crazy sexual blasphemy in your face and then you're 12 and you discover pornography and you're 14 and you think that you're supposed to have sex because school teacher told you that like you know sex is just procreation and it's just like <laughs> and then you go to the grocery store and your mom buys you sugar cereal and you eat a bunch of pop tarts you're like okay basically our physical body experienced a really watered down satanic ritual because we learn to degrade creation as normal we learn to degrade our own 
powers of divine creation inside of our being and accept that as normal. And we learn to degrade and put garbage inside of this divine vessel of God because we think that's normal. And all of these things affect our body and our ability of our consciousness to click into our body for embodiment of ourself as divinity in our vessels. And all of that creates um, etheric vomit that, you know, no, no wonder we have ascension symptoms. No wonder we're waking up and we're feeling funny and we're getting triggered by all these things instead of staying centered in our God, you know, source, lion energy. Okay. And so this is the hard stuff where then we realize that we've all been basically bio-spiritually which is what ritual abuse is, it's spiritual, it's bio-spiritual abuse. We've all experienced it inside of our body and this healing, this healing is something that we have chosen to take on, which is like, I have so much respect and admiration and awe for all of you that are picking up this frequency and saying, wow, like it's my purpose to restore my being because I am God and it's my responsibility to anchor these original energies of creation. And that brings us into the dragon. This is the dragon energy, right? Um, rescued a, a fragmented eight-year-old um, part today. And I, it just happened right before this, so I won't be talking about that, but I will be talking about it next week. And, um, you know, She's just riding on her dragon, riding around her dragon. She's wild and she's amazing. And I mean, I, I will go um, into this next week, but you know, um, what I realized was basically that we are programmed from children to be domestic and docile. And we're told to not do this and not do that and not do this and sit down and be quiet and be straight i mean especially me because i grew up in china and i had to sit like this in school from the time i was in grade one so is there this or behind your back you know it's just mm. so um all of that programming keeping our body rigid still contained right Ooh. So, okay, there's just one more clarification energy that wants to come through here about the AI and how it affects our personality. So, basically in society, there are patterns, geometries, personalities that are deemed as acceptable right and we're programmed from young because you know that's why when you watch movies about high school you know we're indoctrinated with the societal norm that there are category categories of personalities like the nerd the jock you know the mean girl like they have their specific frequency of expression and they even have the same um phrases that they use and Basically, these are containers that overlay onto our being so that the true authentic spark of ourself can't express itself, right? Prison, contained. And so for the most part, you know, I feel like I've only very recently started to really allow my personalities to express and because for the most part, you know, if I were to just walk around society and be myself, I think that people would deem it very inappropriate or strange. <laughs> but the truth is that we are all very unique creatures. And we've just been placed inside of these artificial constructs or prisons of consciousness. And so it's a very delicate process to discover these distortions. Um, and, you know, this is kind of the work that we're interested in doing here. Um, I think that my 
um, work in the coming years is going to be very focused on the dissolution of these things. Okay. So, hmm. <laughs> Let's go, weirdos. So I would love to get some feedback from you guys because that concept of the um, AI as fallen intelligent, was that something that um, you could feel and recognize? Um, just to give me feedback on if I'm communicating clearly and if you are um, receiving the signal. Um, okay, so what does any of this have to do with the the plague? <laughs> <laughs> so these these are things that basically came out of Z receiving and experiencing the plague. So thanks thanks to the plague, um, you know. <laughs> Just kidding. I highly recommend Energetic Synthesis and Lisa Renee's work at the Ascension Glossary. Um, Lisa actually sent me an email recently because she saw one of my YouTube videos and she was like, "Hey." I recognize you from, you know, Crystal Star or whatever, like, hey, what up? <laughs> I was like, hey, <laughs> I know, <laughs> just chilling out here, <laughs> we out here. <laughs> so I, it was great confirmation for me because I felt like for years that, um, I felt like for years that we were working together in the ethers and I was like, I'm just making that up, you know, like, I don't, I don't, she's kind of <laughs> a big deal. So I was very surprised and happy to receive that confirmation from her um, because I think that she's a legend Lisa Renee is legendary okay I have no idea I mean imagine how connected your field would have to be to like articulate all the things of um, the ascension glossary it's just mind-boggling I I just think that it's incredible absolute legend <laughs> okay so Darlene's wondering why I don't get psychic attacked so um, I used to when I first started getting uh, doing this work and then what I discovered was that basically when I experience a psychic attack it would be the parts inside of myself that's in resonance with the attack that would experience the attack because otherwise my field would be sovereign and whole and nothing would be able to penetrate my field of God. So then I started treating every attack as an initiation. So every time I experience an attack, the first thing I would say is, where is that resonating inside of my body? What is that triggering inside of my consciousness? And what wounded and fallen part of me is allowing that attack into my field? And so basically then every time I got attacked, it just helped me because it helped me find another blind spot in my field that might have taken me longer in meditation to find. Um, and then eventually, uh, things just can't get through my field anymore. <laughs> so, um, I mean, and, you know, that's just to say that, you know, for the most part, I mean, even two weeks ago, there was a time when I was like, Oh, there's an energy, and I was like, oh, nope, 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 that's just me, <laughs> that's just me, because the thing is that, you know, when you, it's one thing to remember spontaneously that you are source divinity, is another thing to expand and pull that energy through your entire body, through all the layers of your being, through all of the inner children, through all of the timeline spaces that have experienced itself in separation, 
And so it would be ridiculous to assume that as soon as you wake up, that your whole field is healed and clear. And so that is the process of healing and restoration and reattunement and embodiment that we're in. And so I think attitude is always so important in these explorations because at this point I think that you know if you believe that every attack they have on you just backfires on them it becomes the truth and that's just been the truth <laughs> hmm Okay, so it says, how can we help our children if we are not fully over our distortions? So, you know, I feel like one big thing is forgiveness, right? Self-forgiveness, realize that you're doing your best and do just do your best because again, you and your inner children did not have a very good environment, you know, to grow up and your daughter, you know, chose to be with you and your daughter is experiencing and learning through these experiences just like you. And so forgive yourself for, you know, the things that we want to call imperfections and just do your best, right? Focus every day on, um, let's say, feeling your emotions. I find that sometimes our children or play out energies. And so if, you know, we have a hard time feeling our emotions or we suppress our emotions our kids can be overly emotional because they just take that emotional energy and they they blast it right so you know figure out you know how those da dynamics occur and just do your best and and continue to say you know you're doing your best and i love myself and all those things um because we can't expect ourselves to be perfect like again we're waking up and healing out of a very intense situation where we're being bio-spiritually abused on a planetary level, okay? That's not an easy cakewalk thing to wake up to. And you, just by being on this call, you're resonating with the vibration of healing. And so give yourself a pat on the back for that and know that it's not easy and that you can give yourself grace in that process. I'm so happy for you, Jeremy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have written in um, capital letters here, how to participate fully in a spiritual war. <laughs> 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 okay so man I, I being sick just inspired me so much that i just have so much content to share with you guys today so it's really great um so let's see first day i got knocked out i slowed my brainwave down to a point where all I could do was just be with my body and exactly what my body needed in every now moment. And I think that this is actually a state of being that is natural to our being, right? Like I was just saying in my class this morning that like chipmunks that just run around outside, they're like, okay, now I'm going to climb a tree. Now I'm going to find a nut. Now I'm going to have sex. I don't know. Like they just you know, in the moment and following their life force. And, you know, I think that it's actually quite unnatural that humans seem to be run by our mind and by time and by what we think we need to be doing and that this connects us from this organic flow of life. 
And so, whoo. Hang on, there's an energy moving through here. Choo. Okay. Yeah. So, there was um, one night that was really hard because my body was aching a lot. And as I was connecting with the, the, this energy that felt like it was, um, you know, attacking my body or whatever. And this is a great example, right? Even as this, um, what you call a virus is attacking the body, I'm kind of like, all right, like, what can I get out of this? And <laughs> basically, the, a the, the AI, would I, I felt these little squ squiggly, wormy, um, uh, I mean, this really felt more parasitic than viral to me but basically i saw these little wormy things they were trying to get into my spine and then i saw that the sickness was trying to coat my cells and the consciousness receptors of like my body somehow like of my cells that was really strange um whoo. Um, and then what happened was that I, for whatever reason, because this thing was in resonance with AI, that it started showing me where all the AI was inside of my body, <laughs> which I thought was, I mean, I was like, wow, you guys really just gave me a ticket to um, a full system clearing here. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is great. They just, you know, gave me a back door there. And, um, whoo. Yep, and then all the deep work started happening, right? So because you're sick and your body is finally still and we're finally not distracted and we're finally just, um, there to um, experience and then our brain waves you know my brain waves just slowed down so much and because you know when you're sick you want to bring in so much nurturing energy that i was fully present with whatever energies that might need healing that all of a sudden these deep core woundings started coming up. I mean, this was, this was the most productive 24 hours of my life for healing. Um, cleared out the AI, got information about, you know, spike proteins or whatever it is <laughs> about how it's trying to cope my cells and my spirit, um, my, my spirit receptors. And then these core woundings, right, of self-abandonment. Of all the times that I would put other people's opinions of me above myself. Like in the past, you know, with the YouTube channel, like in the YouTube comments and stuff, like you guys are so epic and you're so great to me and you're like, oh, I love you, whatever. And then there's one comment where they're like, see, he's a demon. And I just get so butthurt about it. And I'm like... Why? And then, like, you guys are writing me these beautiful comments, and it's like, I can't even see it. And so I was like, why am I, like, filtering out love and just, like, allowing criticism in? And I was like, oh, it's because, you know, I'm, I've abandoned myself in that part. I've not accepted self-love in those spaces in my being. So just such deep you know, um, excavations of that can, that can only happen when we really slow down. Uh, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can just learn to slow down regularly so that I'm not running into a wall and being forced to lie down um, by the plague, you know. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Wildren says, I'm kind of concerned I might be, not be badass enough to battle the plague, okay. So there's different ways to battle the plague, okay. The thing is that if you spend, and I believe that every human being on the earth that's waking up and coming out of this abusive relationship 
with the false matrix, we need two to three hours of self-healing a day. We need it. Okay? This is how we can participate fully in the spiritual war. Because without that self-healing, without that excavation, without the pulling of our soul into our body and healing our body from literal genetic abuse. <laughs> I mean, it's serious stuff, right? I mean, like, our human mind just thinks, oh, okay, like, wake up, drink coffee, things are normal. But, like, you are literally a divine being with multidimensional powers. And the reclamation of yourself, the remembrance of your soul, I mean, it's not normal to move through life with no awareness of who you are on a soul level. This is all part of the program, right? It's part of the mind control. Oh, you go to earth, you forget who you are. That's just normal. But the thing is that, you know, I've been getting downloads with this, oh, um, when I was pregnant with Kara, that <laughs> um, when you bring children across the, the threshold, you know, the tribe can actually have ceremonies and hold a field that helps the children soul across the veil so they don't forget who they are and so the thing is that you know we begin to open the veil and we begin to remember our soul because living um within forgetfulness of of who our being is who's inside of this body um it's it's not normal it's not it's just not normal and the thing is that um, this whole society perpetuates the forgetting with trauma and other things that are not normal, um, mind controlled into us for being normal. And so when we wake up from that, you know, we just need to devote so much time. And so honestly, I tell you that I've been obsessed with self-healing. And when I remembered that I'm literally God, um, I was like, wait, I'm God? And and then and then they they told me that I'm just a slave. I, I was outraged and what happens when you're outraged is that you're like well I'm gonna take it back right I'm gonna take myself back I'm gonna remember who I am I'm going to heal this body I'm going to activate my DNA and I'll show them who's boss and that's how we fully participate in the spiritual war because um we begin to activate our multi-dimensionality we begin to tap into our divine consciousness instead of intellectualize about it. We experience it, right, more and more on a regular basis. And that light expands, that power expands. And the thing is that when we are out of resonance with AI, meaning there's no more patterns and there's completely no resonance of trauma and fear and pain and confusion, there's just no more programming in our, our field, which, guys, it's not an easy feat, right? I mean, I feel like I'm quite gifted at doing this work. It's kind of my thing. And it's now been eight years, and I'm, I'm finally getting to feeling like I'm getting somewhere. Um, whew. And so in order to fully participate in the spiritual war, we have to prioritize. Um, and out, Dr. Gal, um, if you are okay, I can um, stream an energy to help you clear the headache. You just let me know if um, I have permission to do that. So, whew, so, but I'll just actually send a clearing frequency through the field for any interference or any um stagnation or resistance that might be coming up and if it's in the highest for beings in this field to receive this energy they will and if not then it will just um whew, whew, pass right through whew. okay and um, anyway, I feel like I'm at the beginning of this work because um, when I first woke up, um, I think this was actually in 2015 when I first came to New Mexico, I was I had really clear connection with my galactics and um, I said, whew, I said, um, if I'm on some crazy mission here on the planet, you know, what, <laughs> what am I, um, what sector of the work am I in? And they're like, 
healthcare. And I was like, what? That's a very specific answer. I was like, fine, what's my title? And they're like, self-healing guide. And at the time I was like, self-healing guide? That sounds totally boring. I was hoping for something like, I don't know, crazy interdimensional light geneticist or something. They're like, nope, self-healing guide. And <laughs> then we spent next six years, you know, diligently self-healing, going into spaces that were terrifying very scary still continue to every single day and the thing is that you know the prize is our liberation and without our personal liberation how the heck are we going to liberate humanity that is delusion if we are still imprisoned inside of our own programming and the confines of this ai and we've not devoted our time to giving ourselves the blessing, right? Whew. Okay, here it comes out, Dr. Gal. Whew. 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 Right, because people think that liberation or enlightenment is this like, you just, you know, you're done and you sit in the corner, you're smiling, there's golden light around you. It sounds boring. <laughs> okay. Um, liberation to my um, enlightened inner children feels like freedom to play and be alive and be, you know, free to respond to the infinite inspirations of creativity that this universe has, that um, stream in whew, from love and um, it seems that webcams chat.com hot girls has spammed our <laughs> chat situation <laughs> block user <laughs> okay <laughs> oh it's hysterical <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, bears. Hot bots. <laughs> okay. So, how to participate fully in the spiritual war? Steadfast devotion to Christic practices. Okay? We have to keep the field alive. We have to keep the portal to God are alive. That's our first and foremost thing because without that, you know, first of all, we don't have our protection, right? Our greatest protection is our divinity. So this is what I was saying about those um, gurus and those masters that can drink a liter of poison and nothing happens to them. Well, because their bodies and their consciousness are in a vibration of, of God. And so they can bypass these um, manifestations of physicality. I'm not saying that we all need to get that to that level of godlihood, which we all have the capacity to. It just depends on how badly you want it, right? It just depends on how badly you believe it. And if you can really allow yourself to feel that you are worthy of experiencing that level of yourself. Okay? Um, and, you know, getting into that vibration... Um, getting into that vibration is a process of self-healing, okay? Because when we think about healing, healing is a journey. So the journey is point A, where we're at right now, how we're feeling. Maybe we're actually sick with something. Maybe we're just disconnected. Maybe there's only just some parts of ourselves that's disconnected. And then point B, which is like some people say, oh, there's no such thing as healed. I say bullshit because the original divine human blueprint template, or original divine angelic consciousness embodied, right? What Christ was teaching and what all these masters all over the world, you know, teach. This embodiment that we humanity are God embodied. And so when we heal um we're coming into 
greater and greater levels of or closer and closer to our original state of being. Hmm. And so Kat says there are people who have done this but weren't healed. And so there's, okay, this is very interesting because there are different situations for different people, okay? In my experience, there's a few different possibilities. The first one is sometimes because a person has a very special mission, they have special clearance and support. So in, in my session work, I have seen somebody that is able to channel just incredible Christ consciousness and energy in her healings but when i tapped into her lower chakras complete mess i was like this makes absolute no sense like somebody with this situation down here should not be able to be channeling this amount of energy and then i tuned in and i saw the galactics had put this bypass channel right through her heart into the ground and so that the, the grounding cord literally just bypassed her lower chakras so that her lower chakras wouldn't affect her and and basically she had had a um, near-death experience that gave her that connection because um, she had a renewed um, contract of service. So people that have a service contract do have special support sometimes. Um, and in other times, you know, people like John of God, for example, obviously working for demons. Demons have powers too. <laughs> Um, so I'm currently actually not taking clients. I'm booked up and working with only people that are in my school. But if you email me, I can recommend you um, some people that have trained with me um, or also some of my uh, colleagues that do sessions as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, anyway, I think that the unifying energy, just as a completion, the unifying energy that wanted to come in about the plague and everything is that sometimes we can get stuck in saying, well, you know, oh, these people are choosing to do this, and that means that they're, you know, crazy, and then these people are choosing to do this, and that means they, um, they're sheep or whatever, and it's just like at the end of the day, there's a unified attack on human spirituality and societal sanctity. That is true for every single person. And whether you, whatever you decide, we still have to address the underlying issue of AI that, you know, this plague is just a part of, you know, they've been manipulating our genetics and the Earth's fields long before this plague came out, you know? So, um, <laughs> Mars says, John of God is working for demons. That is a conversation for a different day. But anyway, uh, I don't even want to go in that right now. Let's just, it was not pretty. Let's just say it's not pretty. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that we are feeling complete for the day. Um, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, how are you guys feeling? So, let's see uh, here. Somebody is asking for a bit of a goofball that time. <laughs> Well, you know, I think that uh, he's actually in prison, no? Because there was this whole thing that happened in that village in Brazil, and they found hundreds of women that were um, breeding children for ritual abuse. So, I did not want to go there. But we went there. So, there we are. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the beginning of this new era for the Earth Star Academy, um, where we really focus on empowering 
are light workers and star seeds with knowledge, energy, frequencies of healing, cosmic, divine intelligence. And divinity feels like fun and joy and lightness and my inner child running free and wild. And belch for the whole hour for the rest I enjoyed. <laughs> Huh. All right. Well, if you find that this video was helpful, definitely share it with your starseed friends. Um, I'm planning on launching the Academy in February because I, I'm planning just this massive curriculum for you guys. And I'm going to um, be recording them all over the next few months when I get home. Are you more stable in lots of light? Wait, what? Mm. Um, the last few months, actually this whole year has been just insane. So, oh yeah, oh, I was gonna say, next week um, I'm gonna be at a, a light workers retreat. So I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be able to do a star sea mission support next week. Um, because basically this super secret gathering is happening and we're doing some um, major work uh, bringing in a new planetary shield and so I might not be able to create a transmission for next week but you guys are definitely going to be receiving those energies in the in the subsequent week and also um, for many reasons I'm not going to be able to continue this grid work journey for much longer um, I am exhausted and a lot has happened so after our stop in North Carolina I'm going to be heading home so I can focus on creating these much needed support systems for our planetary family and on that note I love you guys so much um, yeah I hope that this <laughs> I hope that um this transmission was helpful and you can give me feedback and let me know if the information was coming through clearly and um, I'll continue to heal and continue to rise together with our planetary family I love you guys so much it's always such a joy to hang out. We have such a good energy here. There were some people that were saying the vibes in here are great and they, they're soothing and safe, right? We need safe spaces for our parts and our inner children. Lightworkers retreat, mental hospital for the criminally insane. Hard to tell the difference sometimes. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> right, so, I mean, that's the reason why I actually never go to conferences or retreats anymore. But, um, I know, they're just calling it a retreat, but it's really a, a, a I don't know, a sanctioned coordinate. <laughs> All right, love you. Okay, see you soon. Bye for now. Oh. <laughs>